Hi guys, in today's video we're going to be learning to read and interpret bar graphs. Now bar graphs are handy ways of comparing different groups or categories of information in a visual way. The first thing that you should always look at with any bar graph is the title because that tells you what the bar graph is depicting. In this case we can see that this bar graph here is showing us the flavours of ice cream sold last Thursday from an ice cream stand. The next place that you want to look are the axes to see what information is shown there. We can see that on the x-axis in this case, there are the different categories, the different flavours of ice cream in this case, while up the y-axis are the number of sales. Now, in some bar graphs, you might find that these axes are reversed, so the categories may sometimes be on the y-axis and the numbers on the x-axis. But more often than not, it's this way around, with the categories at the bottom and the numbers up the side. Next, you want to look very closely at the scale to see what increments your graph is going up in. In this case, it's a very simple scale to start off with, and it's just going up one number at a time. So that makes this information very easy to process. Now, there's lots of different questions that you might be asked with regard to bar graphs. And we're going to look at a few of these now to help improve our understanding. So the first type of question you can figure out without doing any calculations at all. You can figure it out just by looking at the bar graph usually. We're being asked here, what was the most popular flavour of ice cream sold on Thursday? So we can work that out just by looking for the biggest column. And in this case, it's strawberry. Strawberry is the biggest column, therefore it has to be the most popular flavour. How many did it sell? Well, in total, we can see that it made nine sales on Thursday. This next question is very similar, but we're being asked, what was the least popular flavour sold on Thursday? Well, if the most popular is the biggest column, the least popular must be the smallest column. And unsurprisingly, in my opinion, it's mint with only two sales. Now, this third question does require us to do just a little bit of maths. And I've highlighted some key words here to help us figure out what process we're going to do. So the question is, how many people in total bought vanilla and mint? Now, these words should give us a hint that we're having to add the numbers together. So we just need to figure out, well, how many did vanilla sell? How many did mint sell? And then add them together. So vanilla, we can see, sold three. Whereas mint, as we saw earlier, sold only two. Therefore, in total, together, vanilla and mint sold five. Let's have a look at another graph with slightly different information in it. So this graph here, we can see from the title, is a breakdown of the favourite sports in Primary 5. The categories at the bottom are the different sports, and the number of votes that each one got is up the side. However, if we look closely at the scale, we'll see that this time it's not going up in single digits, it's going up in twos. So we may need to be a little bit more careful with analysing this data, especially if there's any half boxes. So if zero is here and two is here, we must know that one would be half a box. Two and four, well, half a box here must be three and so on. So we'll need to watch out for any half boxes. Let's see what questions we're being asked in this case. So this first question is asking us how many more people preferred dance to rugby. Now, this word here tells us that we're looking at the difference between these two categories. And any time we think of difference, we should be assuming that subtraction is involved. So how many more people prefer dance to rugby? Well, dance, we can see, is between 16 and 18. Therefore, dance got 17 votes. Relatively popular there. Rugby, on the other hand, got between 10 and 12. Therefore, it must be 11 votes. So to work out the difference, to work out how many more Dan Scott than rugby, we need to subtract them. So 7 take away 1 is 6. 
one takeaway one is zero. So dance got six more votes than rugby. And we did that just by working out the difference between them. This next question then is a little bit trickier still. It's asking us how many people in total were surveyed across primary five or in primary five. Now to work this out, we need to look at all the categories. We're looking for the grand total of people that were surveyed. And to do that, to work that out, we're going to need to add all of the categories together. So we can see that football got 22 votes. Gymnastics got 20 votes. Dance, as we saw earlier, got 17. You need to be careful to line up our columns here as well, obviously. Uh, rugby got 11. Swimming got 15. And the other group got five. So in principle, if we add all of these categories together, we will see how many children were surveyed across all of primary five. So we have five, plus five is 10, plus one is 11, plus seven is 18, plus zero, plus another two is 20. So 20 for the units column, we put the zero down and we exchange the the 20 to the next column. Then we have two plus one is three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we have a final figure of 90 children surveyed across primary five. And we got that by adding all of the columns together to find the grand total. This next graph is a little bit different. It's comparing the average weights of different rodents according to the title. We can see the categories once again at the bottom. We can see that the y-axis is showing us their mass in grams. And in this case, it's going up 200 at a time. So that means that we might have to do some extra work. Any half boxes, like so, would depict a jump of 100. However, it would be perfectly possible for there also to be quarter boxes, like so, in which case, we'd be seeing jumps of 50 at a time. Let's see what questions were being asked here. So question one, this is another difference question. How much heavier is an agouti than a guinea pig? Well, we're being asked the difference, therefore it's subtraction. So an agouti is 2,200 grams, or 2.2 kilograms if you like, whereas a guinea pig on average is about 1,000 grams. In fairness, I think that would be quite a big guinea pig. I'm not sure that would really be the average, but we'll say it is for this example. So to work out the difference between them, we subtract them. And the answer that we would get would be 1,200 grams. So how much heavier is an agouti than a guinea pig? 1,200 grams. Now this last question is telling us that chinchillas weigh an average of 1,300 grams. And we're being told to draw on a bar on this graph to show their weight. So we need to add to this graph. We can see that the chinchilla bar is missing and we need to put it in. So if I was doing this with pencil and paper, what I'd be doing is I'd be getting out my pencil, I'd be getting out my ruler, and I would find where 1,300 is on the y-axis. And it would be about there. Then using my ruler, I would make sure that I'm keeping a straight line all the way along the graph to then mark the correct location on the bar graph. Then lastly, quite simply, I fill in the bar graph to the correct height. And there we go. We've now shown that chinchillas weigh 1,300 grams. Now, graphs can be used for all sorts of reasons. In this case, we see that it's depicting math scores of different pupils. But again, we need to be really careful to look at the scale. So if this one is going up in tens, then we should know that half a box would be five. So for instance, Barnaby here is scoring between 60 and 70. So he must have a score of 65. In the case of Beatrice, she scored between 70 and 80. So therefore she must have scored 75. It can be used to show things like the average heights of different year groups. And in this case, we can see it's going up in 0 0.2 meters at a time. So 0 0.1 meters would be half a box. Some graphs, such as this one, have lots of boxes on them, 
but the numbers only put every once in a while at regular intervals. So we can work out what each individual box is using our knowledge of scale. So if it's jumping up 10 for every one, two, three, four, five boxes, then we know that each box must be 10 divided by five, which is two. So it would have to go zero, two, four, six, eight, 10, then 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, for example. Now, the key with all of these graphs is to look at all the information presented to you. So whenever you have a graph, make sure, first of all, you look at the title. You then look at the axes. You then look closely at the scale. And only after you've done that, do you try to read the question and interpret what it's asking you. 